So hi and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Carl. On today's episode, we're going to be learning how to make a cup of tea. Now for the British people watching, you can probably skip this one because I hazard a guess that 99.9% .9 of the British people watching already know how to make a cup of tea. So this video is largely aimed at Americans. And this is a cultural blind spot I learned of when my long-suffering girlfriend tried to make me a cup of tea many years ago and it wasn't great. Sorry honey, that's the truth. And I thought, why not make a video to teach Americans how to make a proper cup of tea so other people can avoid that horrible, embarrassing situation. And the first thing we need to learn, Americans, get a kettle. And while admittedly the British obsession with tea is a bit of a stereotype, it does hold true in my experience, and virtually every single person I know, even if they happen to prefer other hot beverages like coffee and, heavens forbid, Horlicks, they still like a good Have a cup of tea and wait for all this to blow over. And while a cup of tea is something that's relatively simple to prepare, it's a very personal thing to a lot of people, myself included. And as a result, almost every aspect of the making of tea is something people have an opinion on, which includes the kind of tea used. And today we'll be using a very common, well-known brand of tea, PG Tips. There's no other tea to beat PG. It's the taste. Dad, do you know the piano's on my foot? <laughs> you have it, Sam. I'll play it. And as a proud Yorkshireman, I normally drink, of course, Yorkshire tea, but that might not be something Americans are familiar with. And if anyone curious, like, why do you drink Yorkshire tea? Is it just because you're from the place that it's named after? It's not, although I'll admit that's part of it. The main reason, though, is that water found in the north of England is what's described as hard water. And if you could ignore how dirty and hilarious that sounds, it basically just means there's more minerals and things in the water found in the north because there's more quarries and things dotted about. And as a result, Yorkshire tea is specially formulated to go into tea prepared with that kind of water. And it's a little bit stronger as a result. Yorkshire tea from Yorkshire, where tea time's important. However, I don't have any Yorkshire tea on hand, so we will be just using PG tips today. However, there are many kinds of tea, almost none of which I drink, and they're nearly all reserved for guests, save for this little box back here, which is my Assam tea. I don't know how I ended up drinking this, but someone prepared it for me once, and I ended up really liking it. When I'm feeling a bit bougie, I'll have one of these with a spot of honey in the morning, as opposed to my regular morning cuppa. And speaking of cups, the vessel from which one imbibes tea is also a very personal choice. And if I move to the left here, you can see a selection of the cups I have here. These are coffee cups, you can ignore these, these are my morning coffee, but we have several examples of mugs here, some larger, rounder ones when you need that, you know, when you medically need about half a pint of tea to get you over a hangover. We have smaller cups for the uh, more delicate um, uh, blends of tea behind me. And then we just have a couple of just good old fashioned mugs. And regular viewers of the channel have no doubt noticed that in near enough every video in which I appear, I am holding a beverage of some kind. And unless it's a beer, it's almost always a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. And if anyone is curious about where that comes from, uh, it goes back to my days as a stand-up comic where I'd suffer horribly from cotton mouth and nervousness. And having a drink in my hand allowed me to alleviate both of those problems. I could take a sip uh, if I could feel the dry mouth coming along and it also meant that I had that natural barrier between myself and other people. Like, it gave me something to do with my hand which is, as you've probably noticed, more the gesticulating I'm doing in this video is something I struggle with immensely. Before we move on from cups, believe me when I say, folks at home, that the choice of which cup to drink your tea from is a very very important choice for a lot of people. I myself have a couple of mugs um, that I near exclusively drink all of my tea from. And the most important one is this one right here. And I'm gonna hold it up to the camera and hopefully the autofocus will kick in. You will see there, that says on the front, I'm Carl and I'm a little monster. This cup right here is one of my most prized possessions. Not only because it has my name written on it, but because it was a gift for my grandfather who is no longer with us. And I've had this for 25 years. And Believe me when I say, if I lost this or it got damaged in some way, I would be utterly inconsolable. As a result, it is not something I regularly consume tea from anymore. It has pride of place on my shelf over there where it can't be damaged or hurt. So I'm gonna put that to the side for now and just grab the mug I normally use, this one. Big old mug here right here. It's made of some sort of heat resistant materials. It keeps your tea boiling fucking hot for as long as possible. Also, you know, it's big. Get lots of 
tea in this one. So now we have all the prep done, first thing you need to do is you need to get your tea bag, you need to place it inside of your mug. And something I do, and have done for, I want to say like 15 years now, is I make a game of placing my tea bag into my cup. And this isn't something you have to do to make a cup of tea, it's one of those little rituals that I, I kind of enjoy now. And during lockdown, I happen to get very, very good at getting the tea bag into the cup from the other side of the room, as this video will demonstrate. Move into that, you baby. But because I can't be asked, we're just going to do it the old classic way there. Bam! You can tell I practice that, can't you, folks? The next step is you fill up your kettle. And I've heard that Americans don't have these. And I've heard that this is a device that many Americans are unfamiliar with because they don't have them in their home. And if any Americans are wondering, what the hell is this thing? It's an electric kettle. Uh, I believe most Americans have one that you put on the hob, but they don't have an electric one. This is a staple of every British household. And I've literally never met a single person who doesn't have one of these in their home. And so what you do is you get your kettle, you open it up. Mine's a fancy one. You see how much water, and you top it up with some water. Just a little bit. Now that's probably a bit too much, and you know, I want to save the environment and all that good stuff, so I'll pour a bit of that out. And mine very handily has a little thing on the side that tells you if you've got enough in there for one cup of tea. Uh, you can, I'm, I'm not kidding. You can see like my, it literally has like the thing on the bottom of like, that's how much water you need for a tea. This is how much British people love to like, British tanks have kettles in them. I'm not making that up. And you do that, and then you press the button. And you wait. I guess I should move so people can see. It's not as interesting. I can turn to the side again. And I know my kettle quite well, so I know when it's about to go, so. Five more seconds, folks. Five, four, three, two, one. Perfect, and something I used to do as a kid. I know this doesn't help, but when I was a kid, I used to do this. I used to hold the button down to force the kettle to keep boiling because I thought it would make my tea more tea. And I still sometimes do that when I'm like a bit hungover. It's like, oh, I need a really hot cup of tea. I better hold the button down. And then what you do, you take your kettle, take your mug. It's very important, this. It's, it's quite hot boiling water, so uh, if, uh, if you're under 18, get a parent or garden to help you with this one, as they say on Blue Peter, and you pour it in. And again, something I usually do is I try and make a game of like how high I can pour the water into my kettle. And uh, I stopped doing that when I burnt my ankles, trying to put the mug on the floor and pour it from uh, uh, as high as I could physically reach. And uh, yeah, I, I stopped doing that. So now I just do the tea bag thing. And here, I think, is the most important step. It's the step that, uh, uh, my aforementioned girlfriend forgot, and that is you have to wait. And uh, the general time, it varies depending on how strong you like your tea, but it's recommended by noon of everyone who makes it, two to three minutes. And, and there are those weird people out there who like especially weak tea, and for those it's just you, you dip it in and out like your ball sack into a hot bath. And then there are the even weirder people, I think, who don't take the tea bag out at all. And then you have people who are weirder still, and they're the ones who leave the tea bag in. Uh, I just leave it for two to three minutes and there's a couple of things that you can do here. Um, personally, uh, because I usually use my tea break um, uh, as a chance to like, you know, stand up, walk around and uh, just energize myself when I'm writing or editing. And I'll normally do some exercise. Now, that's not me trying to show off or anything, it's like I just have exercise equipment dotted around my house and I'll normally just do some, like, some press-ups, some sit-ups, a few squats or I have it here. Like, I, I just keep my dumbbell next to the... The thing is, no one's going to want to walk around my ass because like, the amount of times I whack my foot on this bastard getting a drink in the middle of the night. Well, I just have my dumbbell over by the kettle and the tea making stuff. So when I'm making a tea, just do some curls. It gets the blood flowing, gets you energised, causes you to you know, breathe more deeply. So do that thing they keep telling you, was it like the stay hydrated bot on Twitch and all that good stuff? It's just an opportunity, an excuse. Um, uh, to do a little bit of physical exertion so that you know you energize you correct your posture all that good stuff and it's like you've got nothing to do for two three minutes anyway so why not try and get a bit of exercise in there now, and the other thing there's no trick to knowing when a tea's on you can time it and if you're timing it you're not making tea you have to feel it tea, like i said tea is a very personal thing to a lot of people it's a very in some cases a spiritual experience i've seen people 
make faces, I normally only see in the bedroom when they take that first sip of tea after a long, hard day. So you don't time it, you feel it. And I guess the way to think about it is, like almost all cooking, making tea is an art, not a science. And there are scientific studies out there that have made the supposed perfect cup of tea, but with it being such a personal thing, I don't buy any of that shit. So you make it the way that people like, not the way that you think they do. And for many years, I was a milk and two sugars man, um, but I managed to wean myself off of having sugar in my hot beverages because it was quite unhealthy. Um, and I now no longer have sugar in my house, which is a, a cause of some issues when people who do like sugar in their tea come to visit. So I can, if anyone out there visits my house and they are, someone likes sugar in their tea, I'm really sorry. I can't have it in the house, otherwise I'd have it. I, I know what I'm like, I've got very poor impulse control. So once your tea has brewed enough or steeped, if you want to use the correct terminology, put your spoon in, your teaspoon, one of the most lost objects in the world right here folks there is not a person in the uk who's not lost at least five of these bastards uh, i am personally on my second box of these and it annoys the hell out of me because now they don't match the rest of my cutlery because that's the thing i care about now i'm over 30. so you put your tea in you get this and some people they just let their tea drain like this like and this is where the northerner in me comes out i can't be having that so i take the tea you squeeze it out chuck it in the sink where the other pump thing? Oh, it's over there. You put that in. It makes a mess because I'm trying to look at the camera while I'm doing it. But, like, that's the thing that goes back to me being quite young, where, especially as a student, where even though tea is very, very cheap, it's still one of those things where you use a tea bag once, so I want to get as much flavour out of it as I can. And, some people don't like that, it doesn't make the tea quite bitter because it can make it a lot stronger than it should be. But for myself, it's just one of those habits that I developed as a kid of just <clears throat> And next we have the most controversial step, adding the milk. And there are people out there who will tell you that you add the milk first. They are wrong. There are supposedly studies out there telling you that putting the milk in first is the best way to make tea. Because it has something to do with like, you know, extracting more flavour from the tea bag. They are also wrong. As Hank Hill would say, if somebody asks you to put the milk in first, you ask them politely yet firmly to leave your abode. They don't know what they're fucking talking about. And there we go. And this is a pretty bang on cup of tea for me. I'm going to enjoy this greatly as soon as I stop this video, but just get a look at the colour. If I can. That's, that's what your tea should look like. It should be that lovely shade of golden brown, as the Stranglers would say. And it really is that simple. So this isn't a video I planned on making, but the feedback I got to my last Cooking with Cal video was quite positive. So I thought, why not just do something else that's quite simple, quite British, and uh, see if people like that too. So this is actually something people like watching me just bumble around my kitchen, making things from my childhood that bring me comfort and joy. Let me know in the comments, but also, yeah, subscribe to this Untitled Side channel. We're using it as an opportunity to just try new things and be silly and uh, showcase our own personalities, either individually or together. So, hey ho, why not?